We've all heard about the climate crisis, but did you know it's also affecting what's happening underground? Researchers have discovered a link between temperature variations and their effect on the land beneath urban areas. And this phenomenon is called underground climate change. It manifests itself in what is known as subsurface heat islands, which refer to environmental conditions and temperature fluctuations in underground areas below the Earth's surface. The reason why some scientists, including myself, call it underground climate change is that it's a phenomenon that involves a change in the climatic conditions underground because of the presence of a myriad of heat sources in the subsurface of cities. Underground climate change happens over time due to rising temperatures below ground. For example, dense cities with underground infrastructure, heating, transportation, parking, pipelines, sewage and high voltage cables release a lot of heat. So the idea is that um, because of human activity and cars traveling or trains traveling or, uh, or lighting systems operating, there is heat that is generated in these underground environments and this heat um, slowly but continuously diffuses in the ground. Buildings also absorb and re-emit heat. Uh, the idea is that construction, the construction materials that are used to uh, encapsulate buildings, like building envelopes, they absorb uh, heat coming from solar radiation and vehicles traveling in cities, and, and they reject that heat at night. And so that's why when you are in a city, the temperature of the air is typically warmer than in the surrounding rural, rural area. Therefore, as global temperatures rise, so does the temperature underground. Climate change is really pushing the temperatures up, especially in our cities. There's a phenomenon of um, the urban heat effect, where all that concrete, all that infrastructure around buildings and, and actually the activity of humans in these cities creates a, kind of a, a, a concentration of heat and that heat can't escape. And then if, when you go down onto the surface, those effects are really exacerbated because that heat can't escape and that builds on. Um, the result of the research show that uh, basically ground deformations caused by underground climate change can be significant uh, and specifically they can lead to uh, potential issues for the day-to-day -day function of city structures and infrastructures and their long-term durability. What does it mean? To put it in simpler terms, it can cause cracks and tilting in buildings, damage foundations, and even cause the ground to sink. But it's not as catastrophic as it sounds. According to experts studying the phenomenon, while the present risks don't pose a direct threat to buildings and human safety, it could result in significant economic costs associated with maintaining the integrity of affected infrastructures. From trains, from tube surfaces, you know, these temperatures are starting to go beyond unpleasant and starting to become dangerous on really hot days where that heat can't escape. Higher temperature underground might, albeit slightly, increase the chances of suffering from heat stroke, dehydration and breathing difficulties. Different cities worldwide are experiencing underground climate change in varying degrees. Chicago is a particularly dense city and, and it experiences a significant underground climate change, but I would argue, and actually I, I have data about New York City, for example, that show that there underground climate change is even more intense. The reason is because New York City is dense, Manhattan is denser than Chicago. It, they, it's characterized by not only a higher density of buildings, but also more uh, tunnels and, and, and underground structures, uh, underground structures at large. Um, and London is another case. So London, it's renowned that it's, it's affected by a, a subsurface heat island, so an underground climate change, um, but also many other cities worldwide, uh, Milan, Paris, Rome. So as soon as we build uh, a building, there will be some impacts in the underground because some heat will diffuse underground. So arguably this phenomenon characterizes all built environments worldwide. The question really is, what's the intensity of this phenomenon on a case-by-case -case basis? Much of the heat that's dissipating into the ground, that's causing this ground deformation, is coming from the boilers and furnaces that are underground. 
So if you can actually build insulated enclosures in basements, in parking lots, you can kind of trap this heat. So in particular, there's something called shallow geothermal energy. Uh, and it's, it's honestly, it's a system that's already widely deployed uh, and it relies on geothermal heat pumps that transfer heat from the ground back into buildings during the winter. And so it's, it's almost like with all of this heat dissipation, what if we could store it in some way as potential energy and then leverage it to ultimately reduce your energy costs down the line? Uh, it's it's a it's a modern construction technology. It's not the most affordable thing at this time, but I think at scale, it's one of the most exciting opportunities that cities can consider.